What's up YouTube? This is Brian from Bullstrength coming at you with another video and today we're going to be talking about utter freaking nonsense. Since I posted that video on fat acceptance, my take on fat acceptance, I kind of dug down the fat acceptance rabbit hole a little bit more. Um, and, you know, I continue to find things that kind of confirm my bias towards the movement. Um, and I'm not trying to. I am definitely listening to the other side, but nothing is really convincing me that um, that being fat is, is, is like, not preventable. It, it's definitely preventable. Uh, like I said in my fat acceptance video, there are some health conditions that would make it very, very difficult um, to become thin if you're fat. But these people with these type of conditions are extremely rare. Uh, so anyway, so through my digging, I came across this thing called thin privilege. Um, yeah, I guess there's a privilege for being thin too. Um, so I came across this article of 22 examples of thin privilege. And uh, I'm going to check it out. Um, you guys are going to be checking this out for the first time with me. This is completely improvised. I have not read any of these bullet points yet, and I don't know what to expect. So give me a little time to, to digest these as I'm reading them. All right, so number one, you're not assumed to be unhealthy just because of your size. Um, I don't really agree with that. I mean, if you saw a thin person on the street corner smoking a cigarette or downing a bottle of whiskey or smoking crack, um, I would assume that those people are unhealthy and it has nothing to do with their size. So, um, bullet point number one, invalid. Uh, we're doing good so far. All right, number two, your size is probably not the first thing people notice about you unless you're being thin shamed, the opposite of fat shamed. Uh, mm, that's not true either. I mean, people definitely notice my size, um, and I'm not fat. Um, I would say if you're in shape, people would notice your size, you would kind of stand out more. Sure, if you're really thin or you're really fat, you're going to stand out. I don't see the privilege uh, aspect of this quite yet. Maybe we'll see something further down the list that will be valid eventually. <sighs> I doubt it. All right, number three. When you're at the grocery store, people don't comment on the food selection in your cart in the name of trying to be helpful. This is a new one. I've never heard this before. Is this a thing? Uh, if it is, leave me a comment. I'd like to hear some stories, um, some examples of this happening, but I've never uh, heard anybody talk about this and I've never witnessed it in person. Um, so I guess there are people that go around auditing people's shopping carts and commenting on what's in them in the name of trying to be helpful. This is made up. I, I feel like this person's just making this crap up. Um, it's probably the case here. Uh, anyway, number four, your health insurance rates are not higher than everyone else's. Uh, once again, not true. If you have a history of cancer in your family, if you have type one diabetes in your family, it, there's a lot of uh, genetic conditions um, that will hike up your insurance rates. If you're a smoker, um, I guess if you kind of, you know, take take part in any kind of addicting behavior that's going to kill you early, including eating, uh, gorging yourself with food, um, yeah, that's probably going to hike up your insurance. Once again, this is not a thin privilege. Thin people can have high insurance too. Number five, you can expect to pay reasonable prices for your clothing. Um, I mean, XXXL, 4XL, um, these these clo these sizes cost more. There's more materials, um, so the shirts cost more. This should be uh, basic common sense here. I mean, it <laughs> if it takes more materials to create something, it's going to be more expensive. Okay, you're not being shamed. This isn't some kind of privilege thing. You're just bigger and you require more materials. I mean, I sell T-shirts. And the 2X and the 3X sizes are large, are, are more expensive. Uh, so I tend to not order them unless there's somebody specific that wants the shirt. Anyway, here we are, number six. You can expect to find your clothing size sold locally. Well, like I said, I mean, not only are the shirts more expensive, there's just not that many people out there that are that huge. So I don't know, there's this thing nowadays 
Um, it's really cool. It's called the internet. Um, you can get on the internet and you can you can order clothes. Um, at whatever size clothing you could possibly want, you could probably order a shirt the size of a freaking parachute on the internet because you can order damn near anything. Um, but I get the argument. You won't be able to find it locally. All right. I guess maybe this is a valid point. Number six is the first valid point. Okay, sure. It's hard to find clothes if you're, you know, abnormally obese. Um, number seven, you can expect to find clothing in the latest styles and colors. Okay, I'm just, I don't, I'm skipping number seven. This is just stupid. Uh, number eight, you don't receive suggestions from your friends and family to join Weight Watchers or any other weight loss program. That's because they love you. Your friends and your family love you and they're looking out for you. And they see that you are driving yourself into an early grave and they're just looking out for your health. They're saying, hey, you could probably stand to lose a little weight. You know, just like, you know, Uncle Jerry at, at Thanksgiving dinner. You know, let's say Uncle Jerry has five glasses of wine. Uncle Jerry's a notorious alcoholic. Would it be completely out of line for somebody in the family to say, Hey, Uncle Jerry, you should think about Alcoholics Anonymous. No? I No, that's correct. Correct answer. It's not unreasonable. Anyway, okay. Number nine. When you go to the doctor, they don't suspect diabetes or high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or other weight-related diagnosis as the first most likely diagnosis. Well, yeah, when you're, when you're fatter, um, you tend to have higher blood pressure. Uh, your heart is weaker, um, so your heart rate's going to be higher because um, it has to work harder. Um, you probably do have some high cholesterol because of the insane amounts of saturated fat and sugar that you're eating. And, uh, yeah, other weight-related diagnosis. I mean, it's like, I, I don't know. Like, if, if you're a known smoker, it, let, let's make the smoking analogy again. If you're a known smoker and you smoke three packs of cigarettes a day, um, and you tell your doctor that, and then he's like, whoa, we should probably do an MRI on your lungs. Let's, uh, let's see if you might have cancer, emphysema, or something like that. Let's take a look in your lungs. Are you going to get offended because of that? Like, oh, how dare you? Like, I, I, I can, can I, can I walk in here as a smoker and, and not get picked on for being a smoker? It's like, no, your primary care physician is looking out for your health. Um, so he's going to suggest relevant diagnosis um, based on, based on how you look. So another invalid point. Number 10, <laughs> um, you don't get told... Uh, you have a pretty handsome face, implying if you'd only lose weight, you could uh, be even more attractive. Um, that's kind of stupid. I mean, once again, this doesn't seem like something that happens in the real world. It seems like somebody who's not fat actually wrote this, uh, this article thing. All right, number 11, people do not assume you're lazy based solely on your size. Well, I mean, if you are morbidly obese and you're slowly killing yourself based on bad decisions, I mean, um, I don't know. It's a sign of laziness if you're killing yourself and you're refusing to do anything about it um, in terms of exercise or changing your diet or changing anything about you. I think that's the the theme of this kind of article so far. It's like... Being fat is everyone else's fault but mine. It's just the vibe I'm getting here. Uh, anyway, number 12. You're not the brunt of, of jokes for countless numbers of comedians. Um, I, I, am I not? I, I, don't, I, I think being white is a pretty common punchline uh, with comedians. So, um, and, uh, you know, being having muscles, being a meathead also kind of a punchline for a lot of comedians so um i <laughs> don't have like um like actual numbers as to how many comedians have joked about this or joked about that but that's the thing comedians are supposed to talk about controversial stuff and they're supposed to make it funny um so yeah uh comedians make fun of you welcome to planet earth where comedians make fun of freaking everything uh, airlines won't charge you extra to fly. Number 13. Well, I mean, if you take up two seats, 
why would you pay for one? This is com common sense. How are you not getting this? This is so stupid. Number 14. You are not perceived to look uh, as looking sloppy or unprofessional based on your size. I wouldn't... I disagree completely. I don't think that being sloppy or unprofessional is a stereotype of fat people. Um, I used to work for uh, an engineering corporation and there was a lot of fat people that worked there and they were absolutely absolutely professional and outstanding at their jobs so um, at least in my experience number 14 isn't true either okay let's get through the rest of this list and get it over with before I die from having too many brain cells deleted number 15 you can eat what you want when you want in public and not have others judge you for it or make assumptions about your eating habits um, well, I mean, if you're morbidly obese, it's safe to assume that you overeat quite a bit. It takes a lot of calorie surplus in order to put on six, seven hundred pounds. So, you know, it's not a false assumption. It's kind of based on visual evidence. I mean, are we just supposed to ignore visual visual evidence? Like, is is would that make fat people happy if we just utterly ignored their existence? I, I just I don't understand the point in this article just to be a hundred percent honest I don't get it number 16 you can walk out of a gas station with a box of donuts and not people ye yell at you to lay off them donuts fatty this actually happened to one of my friends um no it didn't number 17 people don't ask your partners what it's like to have sex with you because of your size once again this does not seem likely um this is probably something this person has imagined themselves while looking at fat people like I wonder how all of that works um, I think a lot of us think that but nobody's really autistic enough to say it out loud so another invalid point number 18 your body type isn't sexually fetishized um, it is if you're in good shape uh, it, it is fetishized, which is why it's on the cover of every magazine in the world. Um, you know, these magazines that somebody like you would complain about. Um, and of course there is deception. There's definitely like Photoshop and things that play there, but, um, generally, um, yes, people that are in good shape are fetishized. And I would say that it's probably a lot more than fat people. If I had to guess. Man, these, it's like, there's like no effort into making this list. It's like this person didn't think at all. This is just the silliest shit I've ever read. Oh, God, we're almost done. Thank God. Okay, so number 19. You're more likely to get a raise or promotion at work than someone who's fat. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true at all. This is what, no. Wrong. I just, I don't feel like it's a direct correlation if that is a thing if the numbers reflect that I just I can't see that being a direct correlation it just sounds so stupid number 20 friends don't describe you to others using a qualifier eg he's kind of heavy but really nice though um I don't what what does that mean he's kind of heavy but really nice I don't know she's pretty thin but she eats a lot of junk food Good God! I feel I literally feel dumber reading this. I literally my my brain cells are dying right now. The shit I do for you guys. <laughs> Number twenty one. The media doesn't describe your body shape as part of an epidemic. Uh, so they're so being the obesity crisis is not an epidemic. Uh, this CDC report right here that says that over a hundred million. Americans have diabetes or the pre-diabetic. That's not an issue. When there's a push for universal health care for all of us to pick, to pick up the bill for these people, that's not an issue. No, it's not an epidemic. It's an epidemic. It absolutely is. It's a problem. Good night. Okay, and the last one. The last one. You can choose to not be preoccupied with your size and shape because you have other priorities and you won't be judged. That's just so that's just so prejudiced. Like how how do you know that? How can you actually say that with any ounce of fact whatsoever? What the hell? 
You can choose to not be preoccupied with your size and shape because you have other priorities and you won't be judged. I t it's just like that. It's utter nonsense. What are you talking about? Thin people aren't obsessed with their size. Muscular people aren't obsessed with their size. Only fat people are. It's just like, what the hell? This article made absolutely no sense. Um, I assume this website just generally doesn't make sense. But, um, yeah, this was one of the dumbest things I've ever read. So that's it. That's 22 reasons why thin privilege is a thing. Um, well, let's talk about fat privilege. Does anyone talk about fat privilege? Is there is there a fat privilege? Is there even something to talk about? Hmm. Let's see. How many people are starving in the world? Oh, look at that. That's uh, 815 million. It's a lot of people. It's like one in ten people are starving. They're undernourished. Hmm. I'm I'm, I'm getting somewhere. Hmm. How many people live in poverty in the world? Three billion people. That's three billion people that can't afford three plates of food every day. About half of the world's population are not eating enough food. Hmm. I think I'm getting somewhere. Okay. I think I got it. I think I understand fat privilege. It's being born in a time and place where food is so abundant that you can gorge while other people starve. People all over the world are starving right now. And you have the freedom to eat whatever you want, whenever you want, and then complain to everyone else about the social inconveniences that your terrible life choices have caused. That's fat privilege. I'm Brian from Bull Strength, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.